Good evening, and welcome to evening prayer as we gather together at the end of a day, looking forward to the rest of the evening and the night, and then arising tomorrow to serve and love for Jesus again. As you are no doubt aware, we have been having some technical difficulties with our evening prayer, and so if you are aware of any difficulties or experiencing them, it would be helpful to me if you would send the church office an email, because we continue to kind of troubleshoot and whittle away at what the causes of this may be. But now I invite you to, to sit back, place both of your feet on the ground, Take a couple of breaths as we enter into this time of prayer and worship. Sing praises to God. Give thanks for God's name. For God clothes us with strength and joy, and God turns our mourning into dancing. Let us confess our sins to God, for God is faithful and loves us eternally. Holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and have strayed from living wholeheartedly. Envy and fear have dulled our generosity, and we have grown mean and destructive. Forgive us our sins and return us to health through the grace and mercy of Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers and siblings in Christ, God loves us, forgives us, and frees us from our sins. Therefore, be at peace and love with boldness and generosity. We give thanks for light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first psalm this evening is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. God's anger is but for a moment, God's favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. 
full of honor and majesty is the Lord's work, and his righteousness endures forever. The Lord has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. The Lord has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. The Lord sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. The Lord's praise endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. A reading from Lamentations, the third chapter. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and to be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although the Lord causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are some joyful and comforting and perplexing words, perhaps, in these readings. Yet, in the midst of all of that, the anchor is the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Oftentimes, I enjoy taking a look at the backstory to some of the hymns that we sing. And one of the great hymns of the church is based upon this section in Lamentations, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And as I read it, I was reminded of some of the uh, tremendous events that happen in the hymn writers' lives. And those events and their faith and trust in God break forth in song, in music, and lyrics, and we enjoy them to this day. So I was a bit surprised, frankly, to find out that there is no tremendous backstory to Great is Thy Faithfulness. There is simply the story of a faithful one who rises in the morning to God's new mercies, who sets about doing their work day in and day out, who rests at the end of the day, trusting in the steadfast love of the Lord, who rests at night and then rises again in the morning. Yet it is perplexing sometimes, isn't it, when we look around us at the number of tragedies and calamities that are occurring in the world, and perhaps like me, you scratch your head and say, um, God, where is your faithfulness here? It's a question that many have asked for millennia. Why do bad things happen to good people? And here's the answer, my friends. I don't know. We don't know. But yet we know this, that God is persistently present with us as we go through those trials, those times, those tragedies, those devastations. And of course, today we are mindful of the devastation and the death and the injury north of Miami in Surfside, Florida, as a large portion of a condominium building seemingly for no reason, collapsed. A number were injured, 
as I recall, there has been one death, perhaps two, and there are tens of people who are still unaccounted for. But remember what Mr. Rogers taught the people in his neighborhood? When you see trouble, don't look at the people who are running away. Look at the people who are running to, to help. And so in Surfside, Florida, there has been an onslaught of first responders, of helpers, who are coming to, to search and rescue, to care and tend, to be God's hands and feet and mind and heart in this devastation. So even though there is this time indeed of mourning, what we know is that mourning does not last forever. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. But scriptures tell us that joy comes in the morning with the new day. That may be literal. Some of us may wake up each morning with a new awareness of God's joy. Or the morning may simply be that point after a stretch of dismay or despair, whether it is a day or a week or even longer. We may look at this stretch of the pandemic and the many, many months that we have endured the uncertainty and the isolation and indeed some of the fear and perhaps anger. But we're coming to, dare I say, the end of that, perhaps as Churchill said, maybe the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning, we certainly are at a bit of a turning point. And so it is that we can look back and see God's faithfulness with us through all of this time. God's faithfulness lived out in the hands of doctors and nurses and again, first responders. God's faithfulness lived out in the care that a neighbor has for another. God's love lived out in the care that a stranger may have for someone that they meet for the first time. In all of this, we know that we are extensions of that great faithfulness of God. And we give thanks. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. The Magnificat together, please. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, you have scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. As we pray tonight, there will be a brief time of silence following each petition. During that time, I invite you to raise your individual concerns. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy assembly, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the health of creation, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring justice, peace, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and suffering, especially Elena, Jenna, Marilyn, Jared and Julia, Margaret, Anna Mae, Julie, Marcella, Alan, Michael, Ken, Carol, Jack, Anne, Alan, Paul, Joanne, Beth, Betty, Dion, Dottie, Teresa, Dottie, Tim, Glenn, Henry, Mary, Greg, Ann Joyce, Barbara, and Shelby, and those we name now in the quietness of our hearts or aloud on our lips. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Together we are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.